God needed to wake us up to the reality of this moment that we've got a new generation and new ideas and new beliefs in order to guide us into the future. And so what Cameron Sexton meant for bad, God has turned into good. Tennessee Representative Justin J. Pearson was sworn back into the state legislature yesterday after the Shelby County Board of Commissioners unanimously voted to reinstate him on Wednesday. With Pearson back in office, the Republican effort to punish the Tennessee Three for their protest inside the chamber against gun violence effectively has failed now. The protests followed a mass shooting at a Nashville private school in which three adults and three nine-year-olds were killed. And State Representative Pearson joins us now. Representative Pearson, appreciate your time with us this morning. Uh, I know you're happy to be back at the Nash Nashville uh, legislature there in the state of Tennessee. Tell me about the last couple of days and this unanimous vote that took less than a minute, as I understand it, to put you back in office. Mm -hmm. well, what we have to realize is we are facing an anti-democratic Republican Party that seeks to silence the voices of the minority in so many different ways. You have a leader in Cameron Sexton and William Lambert who are seeking to destroy democracy in Tennessee because we are seeking to advocate and lift up the voices of people in our communities who are suffering from gun violence. The reality is, and you showed the beautiful faces of six people in Nashville at the Covenant School who were murdered because someone walked into the school with an assault weapon uh, uh, and killed them. We have a proliferation of guns in our communities and a situation where the people in positions of power are refusing to act uh, and not listen to the heed and to the call of the millions of people across our state and across our country who are saying we need to do something to end gun violence. And instead of working on that solution, the Republican Party in the state of Tennessee has worked on expelling uh, myself and Representative Jones, uh, but democracy um, uh, does win in the end. People power does win in the end. And the people in Shelby County by the thousands made emails and phone calls to the county commission and the county commission listened to the people realizing that the anti-democratic abuse of power and authority of Cameron Sexton and the Republican Party was wrong, unjustified, and it disenfranchised a majority black district. And boy, what a miscalculation by Republicans there in the state house. If the idea was to silence your voice and to silence the voice of your colleague, Representative Justin Jones, the exact opposite has happened. Can you talk a little a bit, Representative, about the energy you've seen in the state of Tennessee that's really grown across the country around the issue of gun safety because of what you two all have been through for the last week and a half? Mm -hmm. Uh, what we are seeing is a new generation of people waking up to the call and calls of doing something in this moment that they may not have done before. And so we're seeing nine-year-olds and 12-year-olds and 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds marching and protesting at the state capitol. We're seeing folks who said they, they had written off politics, they weren't going to engage in this process anymore, saying, I'm going to make my voice heard because we're a part of a movement for justice. And it isn't, it isn't just about myself or Representative Jones or Representative Johnson as individuals. It's about the constituents that we represent by the hundreds of thousands who are demanding that we do something different in Tennessee, that we don't listen to the NRA over the voices of mothers like Sarah, whose son Noah was one of the students who did survive, actually, at the National Covenant School shooting. It is the mothers like uh, uh, LaVonda Thorne Henderson, whose son, my own classmate Larry Thorne, was killed this January, whose voices we are listening to, people who have been pushed to the periphery, who are now being moved to the center of the conversation so that we can create just legislation for gun safety and gun reform that the majority of Americans, Republicans and Democrats want to see happen. Representative Pearson, it's good to see you again. This is Jen Psaki. Uh, I wanted to ask you about some elements of progress that have actually been made, in large part thanks to your activism and the activism of so many people on the street. The governor signed into law an expansion of, of background checks and has called for red flag laws. Do you feel, I don't want to overstate the potential for progress here, but do you feel that there is potential for more to happen in the legislature there? And what specifically do you think could happen? You know, I remain an eternal optimist, not because I believe the Republicans in Tennessee have had a change of heart. But I do believe that there has been a change in our hearts across this state to demand what is our right, which is our democracy and our right to protest and use our voice and our positions in our communities and as citizens to demand change.
uh, to see Governor Bill Lee sign that executive order is a good step, uh, but now I will work to turn that into a law. Uh, to hear Governor Bill Lee speaking about uh, red flag laws it may be a good step, but that is not a law. Uh, that's a statement. Uh, and the governor needs to use more political and social capital on Capitol Hill with Cameron Sexton and Lieutenant Governor McNally to create real laws that improve and protect our communities. Too many false solutions have already been offered by the Republican Party, like arming teachers, lowering the age for people to carry guns from 21 to 18, putting a security guard with a gun inside of every school, all of these false solutions that do not address the roots of problems. There are already enough guns for every American to have one. How do we prevent gun violence? How many hundreds of millions of dollars are we gonna invest in that effort? Uh, there has to be so much more work holistically done on this issue. And the governor and the leaders of the Republican Party have a responsibility and now have a very vocal accountability uh, from the people of Tennessee and across the world who by the millions are demanding that we do something different. And so while I appreciate the statement, the executive order, if it's good enough for an executive order, it's good enough to be a law. While a statement is a nice to have, a law is a need to have. And the governor needs to do way more in getting the Republican Party to change the laws in this state that make it uh, so easy for someone uh, to get a gun, but so difficult for someone to be able to vote. Uh, we've got a lot more work to do. Representative, before I let you go, the Shelby County Board of Commissioners has put you back in, into office, but I understand by state law you'll face a special election now later this year. Are you confident that you are back in the state house for the long run here? I am always wanting to be of service to the district of 86 uh, in Memphis and Millington and to help and support our community in every way possible, like elevating the issues of ending gun violence, reducing poverty, expanding access to health care, ensuring kids get equitable educational opportunities. That's all I've ever wanted to do is be of service when we fought $2 billion corporations who tried to build a pipeline through our community. They thought we were the path of least resistance, and we prove time and time again that we are the path of resilience. So even when the State House tries to expel our voice, tries to expel hope, tries to expel justice, we always are coming back. And so I hope to be of service to District 86 in perpetuity. State Representative of Tennessee, Justin J. Pearson, representing Memphis now with his job back. Representative, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to keep fighting.